The floor is yours. Thank you, and thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. That's a rare occurrence. So, um, And I'd like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity to come share um, this little summer project that my undergrad student did, um, and I just am glad to be able to share the, her result, results with you today, um, looking at the relationship between serum L-lactate in beef calves um, with their dam uh, after varying degrees of calving difficulty. So as many of us have probably experienced firsthand, um, when muscles exert effort under um, hypoxic conditions, they do produce L-lactate. Um, and so one situation where this commonly occurs is during dystocia. Um, if a calf has a prolonged period of time where um, their umbilicus has already been compromised before they have the opportunity to breathe room air, um, they may experience hypoxemia um, and produce L-lactate, and for those of you that were at the keynote um, address this morning, um, Dr. Me did a lovely job of presenting um, the physiology and the complex physiology that can occur during a dystocia. Um, and, and he spoke already about the mixed metabolic and respiratory acidosis that occurs um, during most calvings, um, even those that are totally normal or appear to be normal, those calves have been reported to have um, that mixed metabolic and respiratory acidemia, um, and that can be even more severe if they have a, a, um, a, a bad dystocia. So we did some previous work looking at um, blood gas disturbances, L-lactate, um, and other physiological parameters in newborn beef calves. Um, and we found in that study, not, not really surprisingly, that there was a very strong correlation between L-lactate levels and blood pH in calves. Um, but the L-lactate is much easier to measure in the field using portable um, devices. In that study, we found um, calves with, as Jen had previously mentioned, the calves um, that have a difficult calving particularly have reduced vigor, and that is associated with a higher level of L-lactate as well as blood, um, lower blood pH. So um, specifically, calves that have um, a, a, an incomplete tongue withdrawal, so if you pull their tongue out, they don't pull it back into their mouth completely, um, or a weak suckle reflex, those calves have a higher L-lactate level and a lower blood pH, and if they have an abnormal mucous membrane color, so not your normal pink, but either blue or bright red um, or purple, those calves have a higher L-lactate level, but it wasn't associated with blood pH. And we also found that the L-lactate was related to assisted calvings, um, as well as calves that were born to primiparous dams or heifers. Um, but we were a little bit surprised at how high the lactate levels were in these calves. Um, some of them were quite high, and so that kind of made us, made us question um, a little bit why that might be. And so when we kind of thought about the Homerowski study, um, we thought, well, perhaps maybe some of this lactate is actually coming from the dam prepartum or peripartum. Um, so that sort of gave us this idea to look at comparing the blood L lactate concentrations in the newborn calves to their dams um, and see if that relationship varied by the level of calving difficulty. So we used the same, um, we went retrospectively went back to the samples from the study that Dr. Pearson just presented. Um, and so retrospectively in our bank of samples, we had 44 cow-calf pairs. Um, and we had blood samples taken from both um, at 10 minutes after parturition that we had stored um, at minus 80 degrees. Um, and so these calvings were, um, had been already categorized based on calving difficulty. Um, so unassisted calvings, which weren't in Jen's data set, but we did have data on, um, those were ones who had delivered on their own without human um, intervention within two hours of onset of stage two labor, observed stage two labor. Um, our easy assists were one person pulling, um, and our difficult assists were two or more people or using a calf jack. And so we ran those samples through the Stat Profile Fox Ultra, which is sort of a desktop gold standard or um, benchtop gold standard um, analysis. And then we compared um, the, the calf and dam lactate um, to each other overall and within calving, um, calving difficulty categories using the Wilcoxon rank sum test because the data was not normally distributed. Um, we then looked at the L lactate by calving difficulty for the cows and the calf separately using the Kruskal Wallace test. And then we looked at the correlation between the calf and the dam L lactate using a Spearman correlation coefficient. And we looked at that overall as well as within each of those calving difficulty categories that I previously described. 
So here we have just some descriptive um, statistics of the, um, of the L lactate. So on the top in red, we have the calves, um, and in the on the bottom in yellow, we have the cow's L lactate level. I should um, point out to you that the uh, scale for the calves is quite a bit greater than the scale for the cows. Um, and we had a number of calves that had upwards um, over tw uh, 20 millimoles per liter of lactate, um, which is quite high. Um, the median calf L lactate was 11.4, um, and the dam median lactate was 5.0, um, and those were statistically different. Whoops, there we go. Ooh. Oh, can we go back one? Sorry. Or maybe I can do it. Oh, no, wrong way. There we go, sorry. Um, so in this, in this table, I have the median values for the dams and for the calves separately. Um, and in the rows, we have each of the different calving, e calving difficulty categories. And so interestingly enough, um, the calves lactate levels didn't differ by the calving difficulty score, um, but the dams, if they had a difficult assist, were significant, had significantly greater L lactate levels. And this is our correlation coefficients that we looked at using the Spearman correlation. Um, overall, it was sort of a moderate correlation, correlation so just below 0.4. Um, when we broke it out by the calving difficulty scores, there was no significant correlation in our two various kinds of assisted group, um, but it was quite a high, a relatively high correlation um, in those unassisted um, calving, so 0.7. So we wanted to look at this data in another way. Um, so we actually plotted it out in a scatter graph there um, with the calf lactate on the x-axis and the cow lactate on the y-axis. And they're color-coded with the red being the difficult calvings, the orange being the easy calvings, and the green being the unassist. So if you look closely um, and kind of use your imaginoscope, there you can see a little bit that those um, unassisted do cluster nicely around that line um, compared to those difficult calvings that are quite scattered and kind of all over the place. So just to summarize our data, um, we did find that calves had higher L lactate than their dams, which is, was sort of expected from, uh, for us. Um, interestingly, we found the dams, but not the calves, L lactate varied by calving difficulty. And this did contradict both our research and some other previous work that has shown that calf lactate, it should be affected by the duration or the, the um, severity of the calving, but in our population, it wasn't. Um, and we did find overall that there was a statistical correlation, but it wasn't really consistent across the calving, um, categories of calving difficulty, so we did find that a little bit difficult to interpret. Um, we kind of think that perhaps that is related to the amount of variability in those assisted calvings. As Jen had mentioned, a calving's not a calving's not a calving. Um, so those difficult assists may have had all sorts of different causes um, of the dystocia, may have had different durations, um, had, may have had different amounts of mani manipulation or traction, um, which may have impacted that relationship between the calf and the cow. So in conclusion, um, we did find that calf blood lactate was not consistently related to that of their dams, particularly in our in assisted births. Um, but we, we, so we believe that we really should be assessing these newborn calves um, carefully for their degree of compromise, regardless of how difficult their calving was or what the status of their dam might be. Um, we still need to, to carefully assess these calves and potentially measure their lactate um, in the field to, to assess how compromised they might be. So I just want to acknowledge the University of Calgary and the Alberta government for funding um, the herds that participated in the study, of course, um, the student Alicia Webster, who, who did the bulk of this work, um, and our research technicians, Chantal and Sarah, for their help. And with Thank that, you. I'd be happy to take any questions. Sorry. Thank you, Dr. Lindsay.